Good evening, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project and Magnetic Reversal News, bringing you a grand solar minimum update Wednesday, May 29th, around 8.30 p.m. Mountain Time, 2024. Yet another eruption on the Reykjanes Peninsula. This marks the fifth eruption in the same area since December of last year, and the eruption is ongoing. We'll have full coverage in just a moment, but here is some live footage from the peninsula. The largest eruption of all five is currently ongoing. We also have, wait for it, another X flare headed our way. Active region 3697, formerly 3664, which gave us the largest solar storm since 20, 2003. Yeah, the Halloween October storm of 2003 the largest solar storm, that sunspot is now facing us and the active region is producing X flares that are now headed, wait for it, to Earth. The most recent X flare is going to be hitting us with a glancing blow on June 1st. Keep calm, it's boom time. You're not imagining it. There have been a lot of tornadoes this spring, ding ding, here's why, well, the weakening magnetosphere, huge solar storms may have something to do with it. But if you think we've had a lot of tornadoes this year, you're right. With at least 850 confirmed tornadoes so far and several major tornado outbreaks, it is ranking among one of the busiest years in recorded history. Now, what do I mean? It's at least the sixth busiest tornado season in the past three decades based on preliminary information from the Storm Prediction Center. That number is likely to rise as the National Weather Service continues surveying and confirming damages from the April and May tornado reports, which were up significantly over previous years. Even some of the most veteran storm chasers have been astounded by tornado activity so far this year. So heed the warnings and stay safe. Dallas says storm debris cleanup could take at least a month. Around 109,000 Dallas homes and businesses remain without electricity. As of early Wednesday afternoon across North Texas, the tally is over 240,000. And officials say they expect city cleanup of fallen trees and other debris from the Tuesday storm that hit the region and cut power for half a million North Texas homes and businesses. It could take at least a month to fully clear that up. A quick look over at Power Outage U.S. shows Texas, the nexus of the Schmexis, still 272,000 without power days after the event. Our hearts and thoughts and prayers go out to those affected. We hope you have a generator. Well, and you've been listening to the channel. Roads closed in Greeley. That is in Colorado after overnight storm brings two-inch hail and flooding. And they are certainly bumming in the city of Greeley. Take a look at the biggest hailstones uh, for yesterday in Colorado, and some of them were quite big. Two-inch hail in Weld County. Four areas with 1.75-inch hail and big hail overall for a dozen locations in the state. And that's not where the big hail fell. The hail in Texas was so big Tuesday that it required a new description. For the first time ever, there was a hail warning for compact disc size hail. That means five inches or larger. In fact, forecasters warn of DVD size hail as stones larger than grapefruits bombarded an area near Lubbock. Holy macaroni. Here's the hail map for Tuesday, May 28th. 142,451 impacted by one inch hail or larger. This is the number of households. 1,501 households impacted by gorilla hail. That was three square miles. And the big winner chicken dinner was Houston, Texas, and Lubbock, like we just reported. And in fact, it was apparently the first time the National Weather Service has ever issued a warning for DVD-sized hail. A DVD represents a diameter of 4.75 to 5 inches. And Matthew Capucci measured a 4.75 hailstone that melted for 20 minutes and noted a couple of approximately five inch stones in the area. The first time ever in recorded history, the National Weather Service warning has been issued 
for DVD sized hail. That's five inches in diameter. Now, if you've been watching the channel for quite some time, about five years ago, we said this was going to happen and it's happening. The full forecast now, strong to st severe storms in northern and central high plains, very hot temperatures in Texas and Florida. Scattered, strong to severe thunderstorms capable of producing severe winds and hail are likely to develop this afternoon in the northern and central high plains. Isolated large hail and heavy rainfall will also be possible in southwest Texas. The combination of high surface temperatures and high humidity will lead to a heat index up to 110 in portions of the south and Florida, where most of the regions didn't break 100, but they did get in the high 90s. Let's take a quick look at the GFS model and walk it through. You can see a little bit of severe weather here uh, in Texas and in Louisiana, as well as in the Northern Plains here. In the next three hours, a major front will develop moving to the east. Nebraska, North and South Dakota, as well as Eastern Montana could be affected by severe weather. Some isolated regions in the South, Mississippi, Louisiana there. Move six hours ahead and there could be an explosion in Kansas as the severe weather moves up into Canada tonight. And as morning comes through, Kansas, as well as Oklahoma and Texas are in the crosshairs with severe weather possible Thursday into Friday. Take a look at that. That could be quite spicy as we head into the weekend. A quick look over at total snowfall to see where we're sitting and if Mother Nature will cooperate with a little summer snow. And in fact, there may be mid-June a little bit of snow for the upper 48. Shut up, Al! Get in your hole! Al Gore says I'm lying, but actually I'm just showing you a model. Seismic update. Very low-level activity worldwide, which is good news. Nobody needs a big earthquake to ruin their day, now do they? Now, unfortunately, on the Reykjanes Peninsula 24 hours ago, earthquake swarm did begin, and we could see it right here. It was actually exactly 12 hours ago. And... As we were producing the show last night, a new fissure eruption began. The only problem is I couldn't pick up on any information on the interwebs at that time in the evening. None of the uh, information was updated until about three hours after the eruption began, which is anyone's guess. Could have been my fault, but an eruption has started near Sundnuker, north of Grindavik, the same spot that all the rest of the eruptions have occurred and, well, the main part of the eruptive fissure is 2.5 kilometers long. The lava has flowed over Grindavik Road already. The extrusion rates at the start of the eruption was 1 point, is 1,500, 1.5 to 2 cubic meters per second. I believe that's 1,500 to 2,000. That's just a typo there. Tonight, the wind direction will change to the southwest. Gas pollution could occur in the capital area tonight and tomorrow, and I'm sure the people in Reykjavik will be quite upset with the lays and the haze. Um, do we have any more updates? Let's take a look. Nope. Same update. Here we are live over on the Reykjanes Peninsula, just north of Grindavik, where the last five eruptions have occurred over the last year or so. Let's take a look at the live view here and move this forward so we can actually get it. So here we are over at the new eruption. Quite substantial. Lava in the last 12 hours has, has moved kilometers in distance. And it looks like is all the way over here to the right. See that over here? So we've got lava flowing in multiple directions rapidly. So we've got the, the, this burning here, this burning over here, the main fissure eruption here. I wonder if these are new fissures that have opened up and we just haven't gotten the updates. Certainly a massive lava flow in just 12 hours covering the entire region. We'll leave you links below to all of the lives, especially Rack Yanis Multiview live from Iceland where you can peruse on your own time. Give them a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel and tell them Diamond sent you. Nee. So as we reported, uh, hold on for a second. Okay, we're back. As we reported, yet another eruption started today on the Reykjanes Peninsula. A new effusive eruption began on the peninsula at 1400 local time UTC. This marks the fifth eruption 
in the same area since December last year. The eruption site, located north of Grindavik, about three to 400 meters north of the recent March eruption site, a 2.5-kilometer-long eruptive fissure opened northeast of Slingefell and is extending to the south. Impressive lava fountains began to shoot out about 50 meters above the fissure following the eruption onset as narrow vents, typically of early eruption phases, favor high fountaining and spatter cones. As the eruption will go on, vents will be widening by erosion with time, favoring formation of lava shields and pohoihoi lava flows. And we do have video of that inception. Let's check it out. And we do share all of this stuff over at our Twitter feed, which is now X. Oppenheimer Ranch Project at Diamond the Dave where you get updates all day, not just on the things we talk about, but all kind of cool stuff and cartoons and just cool memes and things you can look at all day, including the six to, six to 10 day temperature outlook, as well as tornado warnings, space weather, and anything else you want to follow. It is, I implore you to come over here and follow us. Now we're going to look at the inception of the eruption. You can see some venting there in the beginning, just as night fell last night. And watch it blow up there. Boom. And so pretty spectacular here. The fifth eruption since December of last year. And you can see it rapidly growing here. And you can clearly see at the beginning of the eruption, the massive amount of pressure leads to huge fountaining as all that initial pressure pushes out. And what they're calling this is a freomagmatic explosion because the eruption here is releasing amazing amounts of steam as it interacts with the groundwater. We'll leave you links below here, but please, we implore you to come over to Oppenheimer Ranch Project at Diamond the Dave on the Twitter, which is now X, and follow us for all the latest updates. Worldwide Volcano News. Reykjanes is not the only volcano in the news. San Gay puffing to 19,000 foot today. Here is an amazing shot of the lava sh shifting from north to south and that Frio magmatic explosion. Gas and steam abundant emissions from the eruption site with lava fountains in the foreground earlier today. The risk assessment has been updated to the ongoing eruption, and it's risky to be anywhere near it. Everyone flying drones needs to probably be out of this perimeter unless they have some type of security clearance that can get through the roadblocks. What else do we have today? We've got Fuego to 16,000 feet, Semaru to puffing and passing, and that wraps up the list as we are focused on the Reykjanes Peninsula, apparently. A quick look at space weather now. An X 1.4 solar flare from active region 3697, formerly 3664, the sunspot region that was responsible for the largest solar storm in decades, is now turning around the limb and facing Earth. Let's take a look at the latest HMI intensity where we can see that this sunspot group is shrunk quite a bit, but the Leading group is pretty significant, and the magnetic mixing is there. Take a look at the other active region that gave us a large M flare earlier today, directly facing Earth, but no coronal mass ejection. That was this spike from that region we just showed you, and the long duration X flare was from this incoming region. So, long duration X flare all the way up to X 1.4, I believe. Yes with the coronal mass ejection coming from the new active region, followed shortly by a pulsed, very impulsive M, what did they give that? 5.7 flare from active region 3691. So we've got two significant active regions pushing solar flares and coronal mass ejections towards Earth. And well, the geomagnetic forecast is lighting up. Take a look. G2 geomagnetic storm expected for May 31st through June 1st. And we're just getting started, kids. Any more events that are lining up and stacking up here, and we're going to rock it back up into KP8 and 9. So buckle up, Buttercup. It is Solar Max, and things are getting spicy. Now, just to match Solar Cycle 24, the last, the weakest cycle in 200 years, 
we still need 10 or 15 more X flares, which is bad news because those will be coming. Hopefully not directly at us. A quick look over at GOES X-ray flux shows that the activity has now dropped well down into C range, which is good news, but it's curling back up. And I imagine some more spicy flares from these two active regions in the coming days. Already the WSA Enlil spiral has been updated just a few hours ago, showing the first uh, of those flares heading our way, which is adding to the update in the geomagnetic storm forecast, the G2 for the next two days. And clearly we're going to get a clip here from a very fast moving CME sometime late on the 31st and early on the 1st, which is good news for you and I, because that's in the middle of the night. And auroras will be everywhere. So get out and look up. That's not the only thing to get out and look up for. The Parade of Planets on June 3rd. Here's what it will really look like. Absolutely nothing. Yeah, you, you won't barely be able to see anything. But I do digress. If you do go out uh, and you rise early and step outside on June 3rd and you expect to see the bloated disks of Jupiter or the rings of Saturn in a single glance... You will be, at the very least, quite disappointed because almost nothing's visible except Jupiter. So although these planets will be visible, Jupiter and Venus are the only ones that are the most obvious. But I do digress. Now, is climate change behind all extreme weather events? The fact that they even ask this shows how stupid this so-called journalist is. The fact that these young journalists don't understand that extreme weather events have happened time immemorial is the stupidity alone that is driving the world into insanity. The first thing you need to know is that climate change is natural and variable and it shifts rapidly throughout geologic history. Is climate change behind all the extreme weather events? Of course, but in this case you're referring to human-induced climate change which is a complete fantasy. And that is where you're wrong, DW. Have you heard North Korea flies hundreds of weather balloons full of shit and trash over South Korea? Well, this is their retaliation from some type of political maneuvers South Korea was threatening North Korea with. And I find it quite crappy. And there's the balloon with a pile of crap and trash attached to it. What a great way to get rid of your trash. You just float it over into another country. And that's a boom to knowledge. Please share this video as we are shadow banned. We need your help to grow. Become a Patreon. Support the work we do. We work so hard getting all of this information all day for you in one place, concise. And you know how hard we work. Please smash that thumbs up. Be safe. We love you. And that is a boom. Me.